Hello, KCIW listeners, and welcome to Curry Cafe, where we put together a panel of volunteers and guests who discuss various topics from whimsical and fun to more serious subjects. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome again to the Curry Cafe. My name is Ray Gary, and as uh, Rick just told you, we're going to discuss various subjects, whimsical and others. And today we have chosen to talk about what it is we like about or why we move to or just, I guess, our opinions about the about the coast. Wild Rivers Coast. Wild yeah. Rivers Coast, yes. And we've all moved here intentionally and probably had some reason to come here. So let's start out, as we always do, by going around the table, having everybody introduce themselves. Okay, thank you. My name is Robin Renee. And um, I'm relatively new to Brookings, been here about four years, and I'm thoroughly enjoying the Curry Cafe. Hello there, gorgeous people. Uh, this is Troy Leah, and I'm from Crescent City. And uh, yeah, I've been here about four, about 11 years, Crescent City. Yeah, love it. And I'm Rick McNamer, been here six years, and like everybody here too, I'm, <laughs> I'm very enamored with this. This is... Uh, whimsical. It's neither serious nor whimsical, I guess, Ray, the topic, but I would call it fun, mostly yeah. fun. There's very few negatives that I have about this area. Well, um, way to like it to speak. Oh, my God. <laughs> right? No, I'm just kidding. Da- Debbie, we, we have a Debbie Downer. <laughs> Everybody's got a story. But... Okay, so again, Rick McNamer here. And by the way, if you want to comment, questions, uh, we have a text line, 541-661. Four zero nine eight. Yeah, we want to hear. We want to hear other people's stories. We yeah. certainly do. Everybody's yes. got one. Yeah, That's if you have one, there. yeah, let us know why you moved here. Okay, I will. I will start out today with with some of my disappointments about this area. I'm a amateur photographer and herpetologist, and not long after moving here, I found out there were no venomous snakes here. I was quite depressed about this. I was that's, used that's to walking thing. in Arizona and Florida and <laughs> and having a little excitement every now and then of a, of a rattle, and they're not. So I have threatened several times, and I have somebody that wants to come with me to go inland and see if we can catch some and import them here. You might get some uh, flack on that one. I did. But, <laughs> right. uh, yeah, usually whenever I, ever I say something like that to somebody, okay. I get flack on it. So what's okay. the positive? What? What's the positive view? What, what brought you here? Oh, what brought my, my ex-wife? <clears throat> we we lived in Alaska. I lived in Alaska for forty years, and for the last I don't know ten years, we, after I retired, we snowbird. And it meant, meant loading up the motor home and driving forever and ever and ever and ever, and go as far as Key West. Um, this not only got old; it was an incredibly expensive thing to do. So we got we got. Just tired of doing it. Decided, well, it's time to sell out in Alaska. And what was and, your goal to be adventurous and find new adventures? And well, my goal in moving, you mean? In, well, no, uh, just when you travel. Like oh, that. Um, uh, pursuing my photography for one thing, and oh, just cool. seeing other places and going to places whose names we had heard but didn't know anything about. Um, that had poisonous snakes, apparently. Yeah, ven- <laughs> there, there are no poisonous snakes. Oh, They're sorry. venomous. Venomous. My um, bad. Ooh, and girl, learning things like. Uh, you know, when I was a kid growing up in the 50s, places like Little Rock and uh, some of the other areas like that would just sound like horrible, horrible places because of everything that was going on. And it turned out they weren't so horrible, at least not for us, as it been through for a few days, maybe been for people that lived there. But And we got to see just a lot of interesting things. Yeah, uh, great experience. Interesting places probably. and get up in the morning and decide where you're going to go. That's a great thing. Yeah. So what? Oh, okay. What well, was the latest? To this area it was the coast. Was I left Southern California in 1999, and I moved to Garberville of all places. Garberville. And I loved it. I absolutely it's fell in know. love with Humboldt. And then when COVID hit, I decided California was a good place to leave, and I ended up here. And I absolutely love it here. That's I wanted a small town, and. It's beautiful. It was your dream, which you, where you've always wanted to end up. Well, what I wanted was land, and I got that in Garberville. I ended up with forty-three acres. Ooh, that's a lot. It was. Were wonderful. you raising uh, animals, or what were you doing with that much land? 
Well, oh, well, I was a city slicker. What did uh, I know? I, mean, I had no idea. That's a lot idea. of land to, <laughs> to take care of. <laughs> it was an awful lot. I lived there two and a half years before I realized I was over my head. Yeah, just to mow that kind of land is like, wow. All right. So I moved up to the Fortuna, lived there for 20 years. I, oh, wow. Like I said, COVID hit and moved to Oregon, and I'm happy here. That good old COVID. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, mine was, it started out very sad, of course. My wife of 34 years passed away due to cancer. I'm oh, sorry to hear that. And um, kind of, I, I, we were both already retired. And it, at that point, I really had to sell the house. And I, since I was retired, both Nancy and I, my, my late wife, uh, loved the ocean coast every time, every chance we had it an opportunity, whether a vacation or a weekend or just taking time off, we had to either Bodega Bay usually or Fort Bragg, which were close. Beautiful. But I was raised in the Sacramento Valley, flat and hot. Yes. Um, but uh, it provided me an opportunity to make a move up here to Little Smith River. I had an old dear friend who uh, was a friend of ours, and I was telling her after my wife passed, well, you know, the this is what happened and she goes well if you want to i happen to have a little studio to uh to rent if you want to come up and just chill out and you know check it out for a while and i did and that's i've never left and i don't plan on leaving that's a good thing i just so, love that i love this area everything so, about it so it was kind of like you want to watch my cat for a while because that I, means that you have a cat now I, uh, no oh, not yet <laughs> you know <laughs> I don't, i'm not averse to that i have a little dog no i mean you came to stay for a while. Oh, I, I oh, <laughs> yeah, like a cat, right? <laughs> no, so that's that's my journey up here. Well, coincidentally, I came. I was living in Davis, close to Sacramento, and um, my thing is, I'm a military brat, so I'm used to just packing up and going. It's, it's not a, a a big mental thing like a lot of people. It's a hardship. They live yeah. in one place their whole life, um, and uh, I was just at a pinnacle of my existence like really um i've been a dancer since i was seven to have jazz and ballet and i my goal was to do um my favorite show um 42nd street which is the hardest tap show mm -hmm. you can possibly do Seen it that's yeah that's and i just completed that th three-month tour um and then the building that i worked at i, I owned a salon Called Hello Gorgeous. How you doing? Yeah, <laughs> and uh, very successful. I should go there, but go ahead. Hello, <laughs> that's, that's, that's my thing. That's, I even got it tattooed onto me. Right on. Just, yeah. All right. Um, they sold. They were selling the building that my salon was in, which was another like what, uh, what huh? So all all of the businesses had to vacate, and it was just like this. Everything was kind of coming to a close in Davis after being there for I don't know nine years. Mm. And my and personal relationship it was um, with my, I was with my second husband and it was kind of fading into a friendship so I needed to kind of taper that off too so when I get into these situations I um, get in my car with my dog and just try to chill you know see where the world leads me and uh, I started driving this way about seven hours from Davis and I stayed in uh, Arcata overnight. And Arcade is very much like Davis, college town, mm -hmm. small, real nice people. And I had this um, dream about a, a town that had an S shape when you drove into it. I know it's kind of sound weird. Crescent City? Well, I didn't I didn't know of Crescent City at, at, at all. At all. Oh, I was okay. in Arcade. Oh, okay. So okay. this was the night before. Oh, okay. So the next day, I got it with my dog, and, you know, like you are saying, let's keep going. I was, I was headed to Oregon to visit a friend. Because I thought, oh, let's go visit a friend and just take a couple days and have some fun. And when I came into Crescent City, it, it was like, whoa, you know, there was this the S shape. And then I went three lights, and something told me, my spiritual guide told me, um, turn left here. So I turned left on Ninth Street, went all the way till it ended, and it ended on um, Pebble Beach Road. And there's a beautiful park there. And it's Anchor Park, and there's a huge mm -hmm. anchor. You know what I'm talking about? Yep. And I, I got out and walked my dog, and I was like, "What?" Ooh. It was like a I was standing in a, a secret, a jewel of California. Yes. 
little tiny town. And being a stylist, I can move anywhere, do do hair anywhere. And uh, I just something literally physically grabbed me and said, you need to be here. So uh, I, uh, I did some research about Crescent City and the housing market was amazing. So I went back to Davis and packed everything up and moved to Crescent City not knowing a soul at all. And uh, I bought my... Bought my first ha- my house in Crescent City. I bought in Forest since then, and I flip them. And uh, it was just, it was it was called the Shamrock House. It had it was green, it was green and had shamrocks on everything. <laughs> Seven layers of paint or uh, wallpaper. It was a mess, and uh, it I've loved it ever since. I think the reason I was pulled here because I love the ocean. And then I met my third husband, uh, who's amazing. And uh, that's why I'm here. That's what brought me to this town. Yeah, and uh, again, this whole area, like we talk of the Wild Rivers Coast, what amazes me is I've always felt that land that where the rivers meet the ocean are, has always been special yeah. to me. And for within our little area here, there's the Smith, the Winchuck, the Chetco, the Pistol, the Rogue, the Clam. I mean, all these wonderful little spots yeah, the river meets the ocean, and it's real special. Or oh, whatever you're really into, you're into the woods. It's there. Or if you're into yes. the ocean, it's there. Anything yeah. that you're really into is right, right here. No, and people have no, been. no. It's no venomous snakes. Oh, excuse them, water. Raise them, water. Water. Almost everyone. It does it. <laughs> I've been to Australia. I've seen enough of um, the snake is and the poisonousness. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> I, I happen to be a snake and lizard lover, and I, around our house, I, and they're, no, they're not venomous. No, but the little uh, I do have some, red stripe. They're all over the place. I, I do have some some lizards around my house, which, believe it or not, was one of the reasons I chose that house over a half a dozen others. But <laughs> okay. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Okay. Oh no, you're fine. I could not just, let you get away with that outrageous statement. Uh, well, well, I'm not into the lizard and snake thing, <laughs> but I just thought that the people were so nice, and there was such a good feel, and yep. It was just, it was calling me to stay here. Yeah. It does that. It does. I I have to say that um, coming from a large city and coming to an area that's completely rural from Garberville on up here, I am a little disappointed in the good old boy mentality of small towns. Not necessarily just Brookings, but all the way up. The coast. That's rural America. It is rural America. There is a lot of that. I haven't. I see you've been to some council meetings. Oh, snap. uh, Snap, right. Uh, I'm extremely disappointed with the vetting process and the hiring qualifications of Brookings. Crescent City is not very much better as far as that goes. It's hard as an LGBTQ person. Mm. um, I look. Who I am as a, as a stylist. I love doing hair. My mother owned a chain of salons, and it's who I am. But I like to do little side things. You know, I like to work over here if I, you know, over there just to extra income, fun, whatever. Meet because I love. I'm a lover of people. I love people. It's awesome. But it's just hard to get a job. I've uh, found <laughs> being this person in, but, in this area in the beginning. Yeah, but I think, and we've talked about this a little bit, and, and along with what Robin's saying, the rural red area, if you will, mm-hmm. you really haven't experienced too many bad, real bad things up here, have you? Or Oh, you? yeah, please. Yeah. Oh, never mind. On, on, the thought, day, it, on the daily, it's changing daily and getting basis. better. Yeah, because of wow. the first year, I, I didn't really leave the house very much except to go to Home Depot. I mean, on a daily okay. basis. Yeah. I wanted to be known as, oh, you're that guy that lives, is always working on his house <laughs> instead of you're that gay person. You know what I'm saying? That yeah. There's a real big influx of that's how people want to perceive you only. Yeah. Because they have their own perceptions. And uh, the manager at Home Depot was like, you're here every day. Why don't you just work for me? You'll get discounts and you, the things that you, you'll need for your house anyways. And I was like, you know what? Hmm. I think I will. And I loved it. I love people, like I said. And I got so many great deals and I met so many great people. I worked there for like four years. And then I love shoes, if you, if you know, by my shoe collection. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I, I went to work for Big Five and love Big Five just for that one reason. Because you, your feet are so important to you, <laughs> in my opinion, because you stand on them your whole life and you need to take care of them. 
because they will take care of you later on. So getting people into the right shoes is, was really important, and I really like that. But they have a new policy that you have to be able to sell guns and knives, and I won't do oh, that. Oh, at Big Five? Down yeah, there? Okay. I, won't, I won't. Okay. Well, so that, that was a little conflict that I had to leave there because of that, but I loved it. But anything else I've tried to get it, you know, I get the interview, they like, they love you, but they don't want to hire you if you're okay. quote unquote different. Okay, oh, well, that that would be a negative there. Yeah, small small town would be small like town. that. Yeah, I mean, you have a limited amount of customers, and you don't want to offend any of them. Anybody wants to make a comment? We uh, we have operators standing by, 541-661-4098. Yeah, let us know. 541-661-4098. You can text us on that. Yeah. Say you agree with us, disagree with well, us. Like tell us your story. Why are you here? Do you feel like that's changing? As far as since the, you've been here, as far as acceptance, the red, you know, the yeah, the mm, good no, old boy mentality. I, I just, I guess, I don't delve into it that much. I try to avoid that kind of stuff. I will say, okay, one of the other negatives, and I, I I've got tons of positives, and I'll try to get to those too. But it, like the harbor area is one of just a lovely place to visit. There's all kinds of wonderful shops. You got that great yeah. ocean view. My family and friends have stayed there on the uh, the Sport Haven Beach. Right. A little too crowded for me, but um, the uh, certain rallies that have been taking place. I was there one weekend. It, it's such a peaceful with the boats and the harbor and the coming in and out. And all of a sudden, the horns were blaring and the megaphones, and here come the the rally right. type of thing. I, that was unpleasant to me. But now right. I guess it happens a lot. I don't go there on the weekends a lot. Uh, I prefer the other, like Chrissy Field or Harris Beach or something like that, but uh, for a little more peace and quiet. Well, hopefully come November, we won't have that anymore. Exactly. Hopefully. Hopefully, Precisely. That, hopefully that whole thing will be a bad memory come well, November. Well, hopefully. It, well, exactly. That's just, I mean, whole mentality has just got to go. But, you so. know, and coming from the, the flat asphalt, Area. And believe me, I have had a great time in the Sacramento area and uh, Loomis and Yuba City. But it's hot and I can't you know, walking my dogs. It was out there in the, yeah, and if it was over a certain temp, you couldn't do it because you don't want their little paws, blah, blah, blah. Right. And there's no real wonderful sights other than more streets and asphalt. Uh, asphalt. But like this morning, this is how my morning started out. It, it's, it's almost every day up here. Uh, I, I went down to the old uh, ship ashore where the Smith River, you know, meets the ocean. Right. And the, where that old ship is and walked down to, they've got it blocked off now because they've torn down the old hotel and restaurant and they're going to do something with that. So cool. we, you can't get right down there where I used to live. But anyway, I was just sitting there looking at the river and there must have been, I can't even count how many hundreds of birds this morning. I guess some fish run is happening. The fishermen probably would know. Right. Pelicans, egrets. Her blue herons, cormorants. Uh, what else did I see? Oh my gosh, there were just everything out there. Just pelicans were dive bombing in the water. Isn't that and really cool to watch? It, it, I it, love it, that. It uh, it makes my spirit feel good. It does, and I can get that up here almost in this area almost every day. It gives you a calm. At least for me, it gives me a calming oh, feeling. Well, it's it's wonderful because now now I actually live on Pebble Beach. Yeah, so it's right. like it's like full, full circle. As far as this area yes. went for me, right? But I, I, I sit on my couch and just watch that all day. The surfers and the and I'm very lucky enough nice to where people. my friend has her property in my little studio. Happens to have a deck that I can I overlook Pelican Bay. It's probably no go. more than I don't know quarter mile from from my, where my deck is. I've seen whales out there. That's one of my favorite things. Oh, up here to that's do. yeah. When when I see a whale activity or a spout, it that really enriches my. Doesn't soul. it though? Yeah. I don't know. It's me, really me, me too. Yeah, I'm out there with binoculars and yep. Just seeing those. Oh, it's it's when, amazing. When I, it's the when idea from, that you live someplace where those things are. Yes. When when uh, I lived on a homestead in Alaska. I'd, I had, uh, I don't know, 40 acres, 80 acres, but there was thousands of acres around me, the Denali Park, and oh. next thing west of me was Russia. <laughs> and, you can see, you see it from your house. backyard. I could not <laughs> see it from my house. Okay. <laughs> had to go there. But, Sorry. But, of course. But, as a state trooper, I was, I was uh, stationed in Nome for a couple of years, and uh, if you get up about 
3,000 feet and go out a little bit, you can see Russia. So. Okay. And How'd you like the cold? I mean, did you? You know, when I was a kid, I, I used to watch um, Sergeant Preston of the Yukon on television. Oh, okay. Movies like that where they're out. Right. I think, who on earth would want to live in someplace cold like that? Yeah. Because, you know, I, I lived on Long Island, which was absolutely awful, and the winter was even more awful. Hmm. And lo and behold, I wound up living in, in Nome and, and following uh, dog rushers and things like that. But anyway, I was starting out to say something. I don't remember what it was. Oh, I can't do that on the well, on live radio. Well, I oh, found it's... living in Cold Bay, the, um, the mosquitoes were as big as hummingbirds if yes, the wind yes. stopped blowing. That can be a problem. And in and, 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 and the summertime there, it's, it's unbearable depending on where you live. Yeah. I, oh, oh, in Alaska? Yeah. yeah I've we, heard it's pretty crazy, yeah. Yeah, we like I said, we we were in a very rural area, it's more than rural. And the road to my house, which was actually my driveway, was three quarters of a mile long, and it was a dirt road, and it went up and turned, and, and you had to be in four-wheel drive and take it very slow. So what happens on this three-quarters of a mile road, you start picking up mosquitoes because they're attracted to, <laughs> to the heat of the engine and the exhaust. Wow. So by the time we would get to the house, it, it, the, the car looked, remember pig pen and the peanuts? Oh, yes. Yeah, sure. yeah, that's what the Very car well. looked like. It was, you, there's no way you could get out and do anything. So we, we, we had a grocery, a uh, car full of groceries. So we would get out and run into the house real quick and run into what we call an Arctic entryway, which is like a little pre-entry into the house, a little room you go into before you go into the house. So you can, it's like a, uh, a buffer from the cold. The entryway, yeah. And uh, we would, of course, bring dozens of the men with us. So we'd stand there for about 15 minutes, killing as many as we could. <laughs> then we could make our way into the house. And we would wait then about a half hour or so when all those mosquitoes hovering around the car had had given up some, and we would go out and literally run and dash in and out to five or ten feet from the door, getting all the groceries into the Arctic entryway. And then close, close the door, and you're in there with all the mosquitoes. You kill all the mosquitoes, and after a while, you can bring the groceries in the house. And inevitably, there'll be some coming with you. Mosquitoes at certain times of the year in certain places in Alaska are hell. Yes, we won't do much. I put up at sixty below before I put up. Well, oh, gosh. and and since we're on that subject, let's, the weather. Who doesn't? Uh, have, how exciting can that be? But the weather, no, and the climate important. up here. Oh my gosh, is amazing. It is coming beautiful. from the valley. Yeah, and working up in one hundred and ten degree heat for weeks mm -hmm. at a time. That doesn't happen up here. Now I know Brookings. Uh, right here, uh, they call it the banana belt, I think. Right. I have witnessed um, a couple of real hot days here. I don't know if it ever reached 100. Not really. In the mid or high 90s. Please. But, Dr. Ray Oaken, but, but then I'm in Smith cause... River where when I leave, if it's that hot in Brookings, when I go through the ag station, there's a big, usually a big fog bank. Right. But, but anyway, it's just all year it's long. Been... Yeah, of course, we get the rain. Okay, maybe yeah. that can be a little much at times, but... It's uh, but that's what not... makes it green and beautiful here. Yeah, I have a picture of the thermometer in my car saying 106. Here? Yeah, it's on the straightaway between, um, as soon as you leave well, Brookings and you're following the ocean for a long way. Okay. It's that area right in there for some reason. Well, the, the benefit of, of living in so many places as a military brat, I've seen a lot of places. And you know, every year I look at, you know, watch the news and you see these places back east, they're, they're driving through the snow and they're... Just living in these horrible conditions is like, why don't they just pack up and move? Like Tornado Alley, don't have a tornado yeah. in Tornado. Don't but, live in a motorhome. And, but no, no, you know what I'm saying. Well, why do these people live in these places that are yes, that I, are I unbearable? Think, I think about that myself. But I think it's when you're born and raised there, you just that's have all you an know. Affinity. I guess. Try, try, I guess. Try, quiet town. They may want to move here. We well, have enough here right now. Right. Just yeah, right. just it, it is. I a mean, tool. if this would, if this would go nationwide, it's something we would be talking but about. But I'm with you. Though, I think of that too. What, if, yeah, I want to go through it every year. You know, their home is. But let's talk about here a little bit the wildfires and people's homes being destroyed up here. That's that's probably a, that's a huge negative around here. And yeah. not. So but much. you have to, you know, repair right. your home for it. Well, you do. You do. First right. summer we were here, there was the, was the year they had the big fires all around us, and and there was uh, literally burning leaves landing on my deck. 
Oh, yeah. Uh, or uh, not quite burning, but smoldering leaves landing on my deck. And uh, there was no way to find out any information about this. You'd turn on the radio or anything, and it isn't, there was just nothing. That's mm-hmm. why I don't live in the woods. And so you had to go down to the whiteboard at Fred Meyer, and there'd be a range of there okay. answering your questions. And, right, yeah. Because it's weird that living in Crescent City can be moderate day, like today, you know, 60 degrees, whatever. Yeah. Then you go, what, 10 miles up to Gasky, which is and nothing. It's 100 degrees. And it's, and it's 80 and 90 degrees. Yeah. And it's just like, well, yeah. But, but, but people, some people, they love the heat. They That's thrive true. on it. They love the, the woods. Yeah. There you go, 10 miles away. There's that much of a variation. Right. When I was it's younger, kind of I, I, I kind of dug it, I guess, but right. I no, certainly uh, don't anymore. I, I burn like a, a bad peach. <laughs> it's not good. Yeah. When I first moved here, people would say that you know when when it's summertime because you can't turn left from anywhere you want to go in Brookings and Harbor. You can't turn left oh. because of all the traffic. It just takes oh. forever to turn left because there's just a lot of traffic and, and tourists and everything. I, there's a lot of people that get, come up in the I, summer. Part of this, I know. I, it, I know. I, I, it makes me think of uh, Mark Twain a little bit with it, about the weather. Everybody talks about the weather. They don't do anything about it. We all talk about the traffic and does it. Nobody does anything about it. This right now, I, you know, I, I, this, had well, this, I had the solution before to yeah. kill him. Oh my God, Roy's on. Yes. Roy, that's the reason. Roy's on. That's, kill him, that, Dick. That's but that's yeah. The this time of year, we have one more weekend to go, mm-hmm. and Pretty after much, that, yeah. it should lessen. Now, one another one of my negatives. I live just across the border, so I go through that ag check station sometimes. They're such times nice day. people. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. I get to know. They give my dog treats, and <laughs> right. oh, that's great. But um, that's where everybody's uh, road rage, or I can't believe that the amount of people, if you've ever been through that, I'm sure everybody has. Oh, yeah. And I go through it a lot. Number one, they've raised the speed bumps a couple of feet. Yes. You, gotta, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Right. But what blows my mind is I'll be going through there, you know, it's fairly metal, but there's a lot of traffic. And people on the, either side, they always want to get ahead of you. I've seen uh, trucks pulling RVs that just bounce over just to make sure they get ahead of me or, or anybody. They have mm-hmm. to have a lot of, I imagine they have a lot of incidents there. Or they want to stop at the sign. The signs that say "Welcome to California" or "Welcome to Oregon." Yeah, when you oh, get yes. right there, it's yes. like everybody's like the the elk that we have here too. Oh, people yes. are so fascinated by the elk. They are gorgeous. I will admit, uh, they are. But I'm not going to get out in the middle of the road I've and stand and lay on my back like I've seen people do. Hi, <laughs> yes. What do you do to take a picture? Uh, uh, yeah, especially down there uh, around uh, well, uh, Oric. I think. Oh, yeah. Or, or they'd have, yeah. I've seen them stop in the highway. and Well, Crescent, we've got so many of them, you know. Yeah. We've had that in Alaska, too. With They're mo- beautiful. With, with, with moose. And oh, wh- yeah. Uh, bull yeah. moose can be dangerous. There are times yeah. of the year you don't want to be don't messing with, with them. them. But people will get out and take pictures of bears as well, and they think just because they're walking along the road, they're safe, but they're not. And right. People do a lot of stupid things I've seen. On- but, see, that was that was the thing I uh, enjoyed about living there. You were talking about living where there's whales. Yes. I would occasionally come come out by my down my steps in the morning, and, and there'd be bear tracks in front of my house, grizzly bear tracks, mm-hmm. or wolves or something like that. To me, that was just thrilling. I live someplace where there are wolves. Right. Yeah, I mean, again, I I'm glad I live in an area. With, I've never lived in an area with this much wildlife, flora and fauna, the redwoods. And I want you have to deer come through your yard. I know I do. What's that? I, you have I have deer coming through my yard. Have, yeah, deer and elk. Yeah, and it's it. just it's fascinating. I, I real quick want to ask you about the titans now. Yeah, did you, you know did my girl? No, I never. Did you been. Google it? Did you? Anything? No, not yet. But I wanted to get your. Well, you will know when you Google it. Well, I, <laughs> I'm still working on Google. It's anyway, beautiful. isn't that close? It's 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 a, very close to Crescent it's City. right outside. Yeah. Okay. It's a little trail that you take. Okay. Yeah. All right. You know, before you go to the casino, you go that last yeah. right. Right. And just right. follow that up, and it'll stop. And yeah, get out. It, it's it's a little bit of a hike, so you got to like to hike a little bit to get to them. But I'll get there. It's just so beautiful. Okay, that's an, another. We're right in the middle of it where we live. Hey, by the way, we're, uh, gosh, we're almost halfway through, so you're listening to KCIW 107 yes. FM, all volunteer community radio, and you can, uh, uh, we always like more volunteers and more help at KCIW.org. And to hear from you, eclectic, yeah. uh, broad, or radio programs. We have Ray has his two music shows. And I'm about to Troy start mine. Yes. to start a show. 
Share so, the joy with Troy. Share the joy. It's with coming Troy. to no, you I soon. I kept saying, "Bring the joy." Okay, it's and share also, like S R C H E R. Oh, okay, okay. And Sunny too. I'm just saying. No. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's my joke. And, and also, and, the you can text in again five four one six six one four zero nine eight. Yeah, your opportunities to do that are diminishing by the second. By the second. Yes, they are. So don't only put it off anymore. Get up, get that phone. There you go. Give our operators something to do. But we still thank people for listening. I'm sure there's oh, a lot yes. of them out there listening. Oh yes. Yeah. I do have a question though. Oh. Um, I noticed, being relatively new to the area, that this year all of the block the blocks of concrete went up along the view. Points, the vista points along the coast between Brookings and Lone Ranch, Lone Ranch Beach. You can't park anymore along the side of the road because all of the oh. motorhomes were spending all night and oh, garbage. Yes. So, is that going to? Are they going to keep those blocks up there and block off the viewpoints well, from you, here on out? Or that one, I don't know. I mean, look, I'm glad for anything to to, to stop the garbage. Yes. Yeah. Or but, overnight, is in, we have an ordinance in Crescent City. Well, we have uh, that here, too, yeah. but they're not doing anything about well, it. Well, there you go. Well, <laughs> I've actually gotten out and spoken to people. Excuse me. Good for you. Do, the, you know, because I live there, and I don't want them to just... Right. Yeah. Right. There, and there's pullouts that you can pull out. If people want to stay along. I'll, I'll call the authorities saying, look, this person has been here for four days. Okay. Yeah, or they'll do bomb fires on the beach, and they won't put them out. And they'll, all, my husband and I have gone, and I'm not kidding you, after the 4th of July, we've gone, we do a walk along the beach, and, to, and we pick up trash. I've we have it. found vacuum cleaners, no kidding, <laughs> push know. vacuum cleaners. We found the strangest stuff that people just leave, and we we don't complain, we just pick it up, because that's our, that's our home, that's right. our, our beach. I don't go to your house and make a mess <laughs> and leave it, <laughs> so why, I don't see why people just come to mine and do that. That's what, I mean, as far as that goes. Yeah, and it's kind of a... a lot of tourists, but just... I know, and, and we all, well, we all do. I don't know about how much I love it, but I know that it's uh, necessary for this area right. to thrive. And I, believe me, I'm glad... It's only for certain parts of the year. Exactly. So, like I said, I'm looking forward to the end after next week and take School a little starting. breather. Uh, but we live in such a wonderful, beautiful area. And again, people getting away from the 100-degree heat. Yeah, everybody come, visit, come here. I, I, leave your that's trash. Good, but no, I see too much, too much of that going on. Yeah. Too much trash out there. So that's people. Well, and yeah. you know my solution. But anyway, I do. Please not a solution again. <laughs> Ray has this one track mind. Going <laughs> he's on. he's on a funny one today. Uh, for sure. <laughs> but but yeah. all of these places that are around here, you know, I'm, I'll go back real quick to the little. Um, to my little spot, it's Smith River. Now, again, I wish they had opened it up, the boat launch, and they, they maybe will when they redo where all the hotel and the restaurant was. And I guess that hotel and restaurant at one time was really a, quite a hop and place. A big deal, yeah. But COVID um, changed a lot of things. Yeah, but I think uh, my landlord who, and friend who's been here for 35 years, I think, she was saying it, it was uh, about 10 years ago was when they had trouble with it before covid but either way, it's all coming back slowly but surely. Well, yeah. Well, the ho the hotel and restaurant will not be. Hey, we have a text. And Who it is it? Says, uh, "Hello, Troy from Teresa, oh, hi. Therese and Tony from Bombay uh, Beach, California. It's great listening to you." Oh, uh, she's awesome. I Look did a uh, play with her. I did mash with her, and she played Hot oh. Lips. Oh, <laughs> and she did an amazing job. Her and her uh, husband are well, thank you amazing that. people. Thank you for listening. Thanks That's for awesome. listening, girl. Yeah. Yeah. And Tony. Um, well, so anyway, that uh, again, it's a place that's close. Those two places, that uh, Ship Ashore, I'll call it, mm -hmm. and Chrissy Field, uh, they're so close, that's where I go a lot. Right. But that old ship, some people to them, I guess it's an eyesore. I wish they'd kind of fix it up. Where is the old yeah. ship? <laughs> it's right off the highway, right near the casino, just south oh, of the okay. Lucky it used to be, It used to be a gift shop or something? It used to be a gift shop. It used shop. to be. And one of my favorite people in the world, Huell Hauser, yeah. at one time came up and visited that Did place. Did he really? It's oh, funny. Yeah. That, that ship is really funny. It, it's it definitely is. a conversational piece. Yes. And every time my husband and I pass it, he always says something about it. Like, how did that get here? That should be a gift shop. 
That should be something. Because it it's like, it's literally like you're saying, it's just, how did it get there? Well, and I'm unfamiliar who, exactly the ship with right the there. story. I know that it was in service at World War II, I believe. Right, right. And then somehow they pulled it up. I don't know what they had to have. But it had to be something. But now it's kind of going yeah. to oh, disarray. Yeah. But, but yeah. But, the, but, it was beautiful when Hugh Hauser did it, and that was probably towards the end of when they were going to have it. Because you know how he is, if everybody's right. familiar with him, just gregarious and funny and loud. And he marched in there, and the guy the guy that was running it what, didn't really care. He just kind of like, you're going to buy something. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. So maybe that's why it shut down. But um, It might come back. You never know. It might come we back. Have, we say something about it every day, and you put that positively towards it. Yeah, you know yeah. that would be the kind of gift shop that you would think people would stop at just just yeah. to say, well, "I bought." You should see where I bought this stupid thing for you. <laughs> well, I remember that, that he was Hugh Hauser. Why does that have to be stupid? Oh. Well, Hauser was on his way. <laughs> We're up talking to, gift shop here to do the corner of California and uh, the the extreme northwest corner of California, and they were just happened to. He, he goes, "Well, we you know we had to stop here when we saw this ship, and <laughs> just the there. whole thing went from there." But anyway, yeah, that's pretty. I, I do wish they'd uh, rehab it. It's pretty run down. I've heard they're talking about scrapping it, just cut it up for scrap metal. Didn't I don't know. didn't the tribe. Get possession of that. Well, I'm sure the tribe owns it. Oh, I mean, that, that's what I had heard that they were going to get that's rid of the, it. But... The Talawa. Yeah. yeah. Talawa. Yeah, yeah. I worked with them a, a lot. They're great. Now, I mean, in the tribal area, it's been really fun, too. Okay. Uh, bringing that up, yes. Uh, another, uh, gosh, I hate to go too negative, but in this whole area, the Wild Rivers Coast, health care can be a problem, uh, especially yeah. for some of us who are seniors. Yeah, um, I'm lucky to have. I get the tribal health, uh, but still, for anything major, there's major a, MRI or a heart. I had a yeah, little heart thing. Anyway, um, you got to go. I had to go to Eureka, or you go to Medford, or you go to Grants Pass, or some yeah. people have to go if it's serious. I've had friends that had to go to San Francisco and Portland. Try Modesto. Oh my! My well, mother, my, my mom just had a, a knee replacement and. Life lighted her out to Modesto. Oh my! And then she. Places. Oh well, I, uh, that's where the specialist it. was. And wow, they. And then she came back, and then we, she, we had a. When she actually had the surgery, go all the way back to Modesto, and my my. But, but because of COVID, that was one oh, of the reasons. Well, that. And but you're. I, I totally up. hear your what you're saying about as far as med medically, it's hard to. But they're slowly coming. Now that I'm starting to work for Sutter. Um, and to work with their hospice organization, okay, and bring that to the area. Good, that's um, awesome. I see, and they have the new slowly. DHS building. They, they do. They got the new building. And yeah. They've oh, right here in town. They've and made arrangements for homeless. Right, uh, and Crescent City did too. Yeah. They, they have a, a big well a thing about a, a camp that they're going to do. Did you see that in the paper? No, I I drive by oh, it every okay. day on the way home. So did I did you see I it in the paper? It. I did. Yeah, not know. yeah. No. There's going to be a. We got a big grant mm -hmm. to build a, a kind of like a homeless encampment shelter, okay. you know, with, where there's going to be help for them to get on to their feet. Okay. Which I think is so encouraging. Yeah. And yeah. we don't have a whole lot of it, but we do. Right. And we need to take care of that. Right. Yeah. But we've just now got streets. <laughs> yeah, they've done a lot of uh, build, uh, improvements. upgrades, improvements, thank you, in yeah. Crescent City. And we just, we're getting bigger businesses, and T-Mobile just moved in. And okay. It's, it's going to happen, but hopefully we'll maintain that. I think this is the post-COVID boom. There you go. Yeah. I, I think that it's totally. going to come back. And then it's funny, though, you're right. And, and in a way, though, we we want to boom, but not too big of a boom. We don't want to. Yeah, we don't want Yeah. There's, yeah. I, at least that's me. I think, Har I think one of the Har hardest. Harbor Freight was the limit of big stores, I think. The, oh, Harbor yeah, Freight? It's a store you love to hate. Yeah. <laughs> if you're a tool the, person. The other thing that we're in desperate need of is tradespeople. Oh, well. When I first moved here, there was not a gardener to be found that would answer my call or come out and take a look at what I had or give me any bid. And I am still looking four years later. Really? Yeah. Down to plumbers, electricians. Exactly. And all of that. Uh, the, the, yeah, there's not an abundance of them, but there are, they're here for they're sure. They're here, but the, but there's been a lot of, uh, I know my landlord had tried different, she, has, she had one electrician that she used all the time. But uh, he was getting ready to retire, and it's hard to get people out. It is. I it's get, look, we're going through that course, change. I guess I can give a shout out here to go uh, to uh, Stadman, electrician. To he, who? 
Stadman, I think his first name is Tim. I forgot, oh, okay. but Here they actually go. return your phone call. They show up. They do good work. Don't overcharge you. Okay. And um, you gotta you gotta try a little harder to find those people because I've I've met some really good contractors here recently and painters and uh, there's gardeners. It just you just gotta get out there. And another thing we've encountered there, uh, it's Little Smith River just across the border. That, that most of them are close. That are close to us, of course, are in the Brookings area, but they won't. Uh, a lot of them won't do California work. Be, yeah, back and forth. It, that, that, and that's with you know, like liability. Yeah, we've had liability. A couple of ones that we had that it was kind of we had to work something around and under the table to to have them go more. I don't know, uh, but that that's a little bit of of, of a problem. A little hindrance, but uh, they're they're out there. They're okay, definitely out and I'm there. glad they're to hear people. you say that at Sutter there because a lot of the problems I hear are the docs and their families. When they get here, they don't want to stick around here for various reasons. I don't know why. I, this, to me, is a paradise. But right. uh, but you know, if you have a obvious we, situation where you where you have lots of people coming in, it's probably more so than here and all the other situations. The thing we always hear is doctors won't come here because their wives don't have any place to shop. Okay, well that's that's, that's the uh, the old stereotype. Yeah. Well, that, that's a stereotype. I think that's fading out. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, yeah. The people that move here that love it like us, we want you to stay. We have a lot of traveling nurses and medical care that I've met that are here for just a short period of time. Yeah. If they love it, they love it. They don't, you know, we bring somebody that does. We have a few red party doctors here. We do. We've got some really great, all the great time. people. Uh, but what we really have a shortage of is is access to specialists, if you have any. Yeah. Specialists are the difficult. Uh, I had um, cataract surgery done about six years ago or five years ago. And it was just right over to Crescent City. I had a car come pick me up and another one bring me home, and it was just great. And then he retired. So He just retired. He, he lives right next door to me. Really? Yeah. Oh. Him and his wife bought, uh, built their house, and uh, that was an interesting story. We watched that house go up, and we monitored. We, we, you know, we see it every morning or we, all day long, and there, there was – I'm a person when I see something, I do something. We saw people that try, that try to break into it. Oh. A uh, homeless person tried to set fire to the the uh, porta potty. We were on it, so we kind of like. Did you kill him? I don't kill nobody. <laughs> I, I, like I said, I want to work a big five because they sell guns and knives. I don't do anything with <laughs> that kills anything. Okay, I'll kill a fly though. No, but um, yeah, the um, I forgot what the the, the Brooks. Uh, I forgot what their last name was, but yeah, that the, they were mm -hmm. the optical in Crescent City. Yeah, I can't remember his name right now either. But anyway, that was good. And now I just go to a. But, like, I, I love the surgeons. doctor who tells me that if I have to have the other um, I done. eye done, I'll have to go to uh, Medford and stay overnight. Mm -hmm. Right. And, Expand. Yeah. Yeah. There's there's a lot of lot of issues with that. Yeah, they like to do their surgery at six in the morning. You know, and I. Two uh, anyway, yeah. <laughs> there are pros and cons, but yeah. I, I think there's a lot more pros than yeah. Oh, there is oh, cons. Well, living here for sure, I'll have to. I like to shout out to all my little favorite places too. I got so many, and they're all almost a few minutes away on all of them. Yeah. But I go to uh, <clears throat> Chetco Point, Chetco Point, where they have. I guess the one downside is you're right next to the water treatment plant. Which can have a little odor when you <laughs> once in a while. Yeah, just but, make sure the wind is offshore. That's right. <laughs> but that place is wonderful. They've got that beautiful long, <laughs> a little taxing for me, but that long uh, trail that goes up and you can get right out at that beautiful panoramic view over yeah. the ocean. It's really fantastic. Great trails and, around here. Oh uh, yeah, all kinds. And they have a little dog park there. I I've kind of uh, lost favor with some dog parks lately. I don't take my dog anymore. Well, they have no water, they have no chairs, and they have no shade. Well, and, That's yeah, hard and, to do. and what people do that don't is, control their animals that, and they don't come with vaccinated animals. Yeah, and all of that. So, so yeah. That so issue. I, but I have been in there, and I've had I, I've had a lot of good times with. But I just don't do it anymore because my I dog is old it. and arthritic, and but we, we like have me. a brand new dog park in for large City. and small dogs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Present City. At, do you take yours there? Um, I did in the very beginning when people didn't really know about it because I have okay. four, right? So yes. So they can have fun and not have to worry about other animals. Okay. Because like I said, most a lot of people they don't like the like kids. You got to watch your your animals to make sure they're not attacking well, other animals. That's a problem. Too. Don't bring them to a dog park if they're aggressive, and pick up your poop. That's please. 
Please, well, Jesus, please. I've got, I've got <laughs> dog up. bags all the time. I, I mean, I know. I've got some on me. It, it just, I know. if you have a dog, you take him for a walk. Yeah. You you have, if you have a dog, I'll stop you have, people and say, you have a dog, you have, If you have a dog, you have plastic bags in every pocket of every and you know article of clothing. You know, my husband right. and I do all the time. Yes. yes. And a, and another plus for this whole area, it's a very dog I'm dog, a dog friendly. Lover. Yeah. It's very dog friendly. Now, you can even bring, and I encountered this just last week, you can bring dogs, some dogs, into a restaurant. I really yep. don't care. I, I'm not a fan of that. The restaurant's a little, a little different, but we bring well, our dogs. And everything that's Safeway, any of the and stores. That's as long right. as they're Same in here. a papoose, we, we call them little papooses. Right. It's like carrying a, a handbag. What's right. the difference? Why is it going to bother you? Yeah. If it doesn't sit on the floor and go yeah. to the bathroom. But restaurants are a little different. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we well, take ours wherever, and we haven't had a problem with that. I, and I have had my, my dog can be a little terror, so that it, I usually leave her home. But outside, I've eaten outside with her. Oh yeah, that's, and other friends. They, they do a lot of especially but when COVID it is, happened. Very dog friendly, and I, I nice. certainly enjoy that. Yeah. So even at Pride to, this year, we I did a dog show. Oh, it was cool. totally fun. A lot of people showed up for that. Okay. They had prizes and trophies and ribbons, and I'll do it again next year, the second annual Pride. Okay. Since we just um, do the first one, and along with uh, medical for humans, medical for. Uh, our animals is a little tough up here too. It can be, but I, there's, you know what? I've never. There's a few here that are just amazing. Yeah. There are, and they're open seven days a week. Yeah, yes. town and country is where yes. we take our. That, and, oh, and they, okay, you just, do that. I was going to ask oh, you to yeah. go down. I, uh, I didn't know. I've never taken my dog to Crescent City because I'm closer to here. Right. And uh, you're right, town and country. Seven days a week. Seven days a week. That's a yeah. big plus. It, it, it's a fee. I, I, for me, it's it's a feeling. I, I want to feel it there. Because oh, animals are time. my family, and That's I want right. them to treat them as such. Some vets you can go to, they don't. And mm -mm, goodbye. You know? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, town and country here is just amazing. I want to run back again, but uh, these sites that I've seen, uh, so many wonderful uh, wildlife sites that I've seen since I've been here. At Chetco Point, when they, now I, uh, I haven't seen, it's funny, I haven't seen any whales at that particular site since I've been here. It's such a big panoramic view, but I've, one day we're just sitting there, and there weren't too many people there and on that bench. And then <laughs> here comes this eagle flying mm. by me right. with a fish in its talons. Wow. And it was kind of, it, while it was flying, it was like moving the fish around to trying to get it aerodynamic. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. And it's like, amazing. But just right? what a wonderful, wonderful sight to it see. That's, um, and then another time I was down at the harbor on the Chetco uh Right by the river there, and of course it was salmon times, so they were uh, all you know the hundreds of boats. Let me Tons see here. Hold on, I'm gonna. We've got a text. I'm gonna have to read here. Who's that? It says Chetco Point Dog Park has two pens. Both have water and a picnic table. Great place for my doggy to meet up with his best doggy friends. Okay, yeah, that's that is true. I forgot about they do have the two places. Thank you for that. Um, so anyway, I'm down at the Chetco. Uh, river that one day, you know, walking around having a good time. It's the hundred. They just the boats just circle around trolling, I guess, for salmon. And right next, I happen to look down, and here comes this big seal popping up out of the water with this huge salmon in its mouth. Hello. And I'm like, wow, that. <laughs> hey guys, you you're missing your opportunity over here. Just we hear them all the time. Seeing, yeah, I've never seen that. And especially with their mating season, we can hear them from my, the house. Oh they're, man, they're at the heart. Their sound. Ar, ar, ar. Yep. Yep. In Crescent, they're they're just everywhere. It's beautiful. Oh, I think just it's beautiful. to see them. Yeah, I, I I don't know how the the fishermen at the harbor or the people with their boats. I think they have a little <laughs> trouble with them there sometimes. Well, they have the says where you've got to be. Yeah, you got to be, be leery of them. Yeah, when yeah, I guess it's when the fishermen anchovies or something. Where right, the, right. Yeah, they're all over the the yeah, docks and climbing on boats and things. Right. If, if I had and a boat there, season. it might not be yeah. too friendly towards them to either. Does that have something to do with the grunion when they run? It's, maybe it's grunion. I don't know, but it's some kind of a fish that was running oh, about six weeks ago. Two when I ago. was a kid, I used to think grunion had fur. <laughs> 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 People say grunion running. And I've never been, I've never been fishing animals. ever. Fishing? Yeah, I, I don't do it. Anymore. Some of my friends that hear that I that that know that I'm up here, who are fishermen or fisherwomen, whatever. They they can't believe you. Man, you're in you're in fishing heaven. And the yeah, Smith exactly. back to the Smith River down there, it's beautiful. And up the canyon, the whole the Smith River canyons absolutely awesome. And I think 
it's the only last undammed river in California. Right. I believe. Have you done that? The jet boats through there? No, no. I have. Yeah. Oh, like the Smith? Or the, Smith. Uh, I know my friend. There's two uh, of them, yeah. Does the one up in the Rogue. Yeah, there's yeah both of them. There's, oh, they're fine. Have you, have you been on oh, that? Oh, huh? yeah. It's okay. such a fun day. Okay. Yeah, she loves it. She Every time her family shows up, she that's what she plans on doing. The, the guides always have stories, and they take you for lunch, and it's it's so much and fun. I, Somebody I, mentioned before about how the temperature changes as you go inland a little bit. Oh, probably. No, right no better place to find that than on that boat ride. You yep. go inland, and you go to the restaurant, and you're dying. It's, <laughs> it's unbelievable. It's a little oh. warmer, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, you, you're praying to get back to the coast where where it cool. cools off, uh, yeah. yeah. And I heard it. from someone, and I don't remember who I heard it from or what which river it was, but one of the rivers around here is the cleanest river in the United States. I think it was well, it was either the Smith or the Rogue. I'm not sure, but I would the, the Smith would be, would be a good candidate for it because, like I said, it's yeah. the last undammed river. But I, that one I haven't heard. But I, would, I wouldn't doubt it. I would. Yeah. You would doubt it? Yeah. All these rivers yeah. have. Well, every, Stuff coming yeah, but, off the roads, and but you can that. see you can well, see I mean, right through it. It's really clear. Where, where, where do they do the 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 rafting, the raft races? Oh, that's Isn't up the at, rogue. No, well, they might do it up the rogue, but they do it out of uh, Ayuchi. Ayuchi, yeah, right. It's we just drove drove through there, and it was beautiful. Yeah, beautiful yeah. water. Just right. I, I, don't, yeah, I have you know, I wouldn't drink it, but you know, <laughs> right. yeah, right. It, it seemed very clean and yeah. very nice. But so anyway, yeah, it's... Um, you're always going to experience I, new stuff. What's that? You're always going to experience new stuff just by going for a walk every day, right? And, and another, I'll shout out to another great place. I like to go Cape Ferrello, which is up the coast about... Oh, it's only about... Six miles. Thank you. Yeah. North of us here. And I love it for... And I've seen the best whale watching day I ever had since I was up here was right there. It was January. I think we saw... Now, there weren't a hundred some whales, I know, but a hundred right. uh, spout. It was amazing. It is. I couldn't even just. You don't know what you're experiencing. inspiring. But it's also, I also like it because it's not very crowded up there. It's kind of yeah. small. Right. And great, uh, great panoramic view. Totally. And not to mention, the, I'm allergic to shellfish. So the crabbing up here, people just oh, go man. insane for the crab. My husband oh, yeah. and mother in law love their crab when it's crab season. Yep. But it's I, fresh and it's delicious. And I get it down it. at the. Fish market there in the harbor. Yeah, if you like fish. Could I ask you about the uh, <laughs> allergic to shellfish? Uh, okay. I go into are, 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 the, are the shellfish crustacean shellfish? Is that what anything that's about? in a shell? Yeah, and, lobster any kind of, shell. Yeah, yeah. But then, anything. Anything. Clam, anything. Clams are completely different animals. Yeah, I just stay away from it. I'm also allergic. To, I'm really high, highly allergic to is strawberries. It closes my esophagus. Oh, that's not So good. I stay away from all berries, even Halle Berry. Okay, yeah. I'm scared of her. <laughs> all right, that's my joke. But um, it, it, once you've had uh, the ground well, Holly, like if that. you're listening, I am not allergic to berries. Uh, well, I, why do I have a feeling, yeah, you yeah. didn't. But anyways, <laughs> yeah, the shellfish is, people just go crazy I'll be over done. the crabs wow. in this yeah. area. And from what my husband and my mother are, they love it. So when they say it's, fr you know, it's really fresh and it's mm -hmm. delicious, I just can't. No, sorry. No, 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 it's taken. I want to chance. breathe today. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think the other thing that I would love to see more of in the area is music. Oh, more blues. Very well. Blues? More blues. And a little bit later, instead of five to seven, that's awfully oh, early. Good, I mean, I, I realize we're a retirement town, but oh, from that's... five to seven to have the only music going or six I, to eight, I go very, that, that's I go, early. But it's no, changing. that's good, but I would it's like changing. it from 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. <laughs> I go to, uh, <laughs> I go no, to I music it. pretty frequently with a friend of mine, and uh, I'm usually bringing her home about 7.30. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I, but yeah, I have a one of one of my radio shows is a is a uh, what I call a doo wop show. It's music of the fifties, and it was a silly doo wop song that was uh, the guy is counting down the hours until he can go pick up his state. It's, he's starting at two in the afternoon, and now it's three o'clock, and now it's this, and now, and then finally it says it's almost eight o'clock. I can go pick up my girl now. Uh, uh, you know, in Brookings, he'd be bringing his girl home at eight o'clock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My ultimate goal, of speaking of music, is uh, especially with this radio station. I would love to start a Love Line show. A love, you oh, know, Love Line because like they don't dedication. do that anymore. Either. Yeah, right. where, where you call, you know, call or text in and tell me your story about oh 
the joy of your relationship because all you hear so much negative uh, about well, it. We, it's we, like you know, tell your great story. Let me play a song for you. That that would awesome. be my ultimate goal. That's awesome. We did have a Valentine's Day special here at KCIW. Uh, now I've last Valentine's Day. Maybe we'll do it again. That's when I was married. Yeah, oh, on Valentine's yay. Day. Okay. So okay. you would not forget the date. You <laughs> okay. cannot forget, right? But it was pretty cool where uh, Doug Hansen and who else did that? Uh, anyway, it was a dedication, and I even had mine because uh, I love the uh, the Beatles version of Till There Was You. Yeah. And that was kind of like was my just wife. Awesome. I, I, I think that's a they do that song beautifully. So anyway, yeah, yeah. but that's a great idea, and we'll probably be hearing it soon with Share the Joy with Troy. You know you will. There's going to be a lot of joy happening. But I think everybody should text in or write in or email in their suggestions for topics yeah. for future oh, shows. We're always looking for that. Oh, and that would be 541 541- Six six one four zero nine eight. Or they can just go to the website, also. You know. And that too, kciw.org, Yeah, and you'll find know. our uh, leader Ray uh, Ray shows Moon Dog and What's Going On, and I listen to those a lot. Me too. So yeah. there you go. What, what's going on? Shameless if you think, plug. Think you need right. to learn something uh-huh. about life. Uh-huh. And, so. and Moon Dog, if you just want to have some yeah. fun, turns yeah. turns me into a doo wop fan because yes. I was young and I. When I was young, I liked that stuff too. It amazes me how many how popular that music is. Uh, it's getting a resurgence, and it should. Is it really? Oh yeah, I didn't know should. that. It is. It you know, people come up to me and say they know that they know that show, and and it's really it's it's playing the coasters and, and music like that, well, which is great people fun. Kind, it was, it's music was kind back then. Yeah, it was, you know, it was all holding hands about love, you know, and now it's just like back that thing up. No, <laughs> what happened to you know? You know I want to take you on a you know hold your right. hand and and Ray, Ray, but you the, cover, the, the problem uh, is the other show I put some thought into it's meaningful songs about yeah but it's about good. peace and whatever right. and right nobody, nobody ever tells me they like that show now, I, 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 I do get somebody I have emailed you you yes yeah, so I. Give me some props there, buddy. Oh, okay. Yeah, hello, hello. <laughs> That's okay. No, they are. They're great shows. And I like the way you cover uh, uh, from the uh, on the Moondog and the doo-wop how many black artists actually did a lot of these original songs. A lot, yeah. yeah. But then... But they uh, were discriminated. Yes. Well, it, was, it wasn't It was that. It was the, it was the white record companies... Uh, they wouldn't play them. Had, no, they had the money. Yeah. They well, could promote it. Uh, you know, Decca and some of the bigger companies, they could... Along the payola line, and stuff, but uh, along that line, I have to go back to the old. Sa- there's a great old Saturday Night Live. Ray Charles was on the show, uh, and the other players came out and di- they were called the Young Caucasians. <laughs> and, uh, you remember that one, John Belushi, Dan, all of them, and they were trying to do Ray's song, and then he, he oh no 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 man, this is that. <laughs> and that's also what's happening up here. There's, I'm seeing more diversity. Oh yeah, you bet. Up here, which you is bet. really awesome because yep. a lot of my friends were like, "Are you crazy?" How many uh, LGBT are there? I'm like, I don't, I don't live my life like that. I don't go places because yeah. of those reasons. But now that I'm here and we have, we've got a website or whatever, there's a very strong LGBT community here and a lot of diversity here in general. Yes, you and, just got to be there talking, for it. Yeah, yeah, and this whole area. I mean, Brookings and yeah. I think Gold Beach whole, area too. Coastal, also. Yeah, yeah, it's trying to get recognized. You know. Well, okay, we're, we're coming down to the know. last, no, it's going down so to the fast. last minute, and I'd just like to remind you: if you want to participate in this show, just get a hold of us I'll at KC, KCIW.org. Let's talk about it, and you can be part of the show if you want to. Yes, you bet. Thank you, everybody. So, so my here we are. Got, the last I got minute. so many more shout-outs, but uh, I know I, I think list I things I want to talk about. Go ahead, pick one or two. Well, I pick, hurry up. <laughs> right. No, I you got to do it. I got to do it right sure. now. No, yeah, <laughs> I can't. Forty seconds. Here Forty we seconds. Harbor, all the yeah, I think I well covered them. Trissy Field. Thirty-five anyway. seconds. Go ahead. Come and bring the joy. It's a wonderful area. Lovely, beautiful. It's paradise, and uh, it is. I think most people feel that way. It comes to the music. If if we had an occasional rattlesnake or... Oh, uh, God, I did with the rattlesnake. The Smith River, I was right. Okay, the Smith River is the wildest and cleanest river in the country. From a tech. Thank you, whoever sent that in. Thank you. Thank you very much.